Yeah, I had somebody ask me how I'm unsticking a froze-up motor that sat for, uh, let's see, what's the last plate on this thing? Yankee Country, 1996. That's the last time we put a plate on this damn thing. It sat out by a buddy of mine's pool. And then uh, some kid down in Fort Myers had it. And another buddy of mine bought it. Um, unknowingly. And I just traded two water buffaloes that I didn't want to work on for it. But uh, what I do... This is the most effective way in the world that I have found. I'm now, right through the oil fill, I've got a hose running in there, and that's coming out of just a little aquarium pump down there. Everything drips into the pan, and sometimes I have to use a lot bigger pan. It just depends on the bike. But uh, at the top of these valve covers on every bike there's a damn manifold and all you have to do suppose it would help if that hose was not kinked eh? Oh, fuck yeah now it's draining better but all you have to do that mixture there is five gallons of diesel fuel and nine quarts of marble mystery oil I'm pumping it down through there, it's coming out nice, right through here, through the, um, that actually comes right out of the top of that valve cover in the back there, I don't know if you can see that shit in there or not, but I just got that, just disconnected the one hose, and I mean on any bike you can do that, even on these Suzuki's four cylinders, they've all got one at the top. Now if you got carbs that are down low, you want them to fill too, because that saves you time cleaning them later, um, in this case. I've actually got enough flow that I've had oil a couple of times up in the air box, which is a good thing. I think it's fun as hell. But when I can pull all four spark plugs and they're full, I'll run in another two or three days, and that just makes sure that I break up all the rust. And then after I've run it that other two or three days, believe me, everything is freed up. Even if it was seized from overheating, uh, unless the pistons got welded to the bore, but this one we know was just seized up from rust. And rust-wise, I've already probably pulled out a quarter of a pound, which is a lot of rust to have inside an engine. If you look down in that spark plug hole, you can see the kind of rust that's been overflowing out. That was nice and clean. It's all rusty now. But uh, this bike itself is a 84 VF 1100 S Sabre. Uh, nothing special done to the motor. The guy might have jetted the carbs, we never know. Um, exhaust is aftermarket Yoshi F1. Uh, cool, Postal Service done went to diesels again. I was wondering when I was going to get that thing back. Uh, these were 174 miles an hour and the interceptor was 185 miles an hour and the only difference between the two I think is just a rev limiter in the damn ignition box I'm not really sure I know it's not the pumpkin because they interchange and they're the same damn gear ratio but this pumpkin I am going to pull off of here I'm going to put one on from a 77 gold wing and go to 3.1 to 1 for a rear ratio instead of 3.8 to 1 which is where it's at now that'll bring the top speed up and longevity wise just because I don't care about this motor and I'd rather come home with something really nice I got a little Paxton supercharger and a fuel injection system from a interceptor that drives off the timing chain and I got to take these valves well, at least take the top of the valve covers off and clean them anyway, so... I'm going to put in that extended timing chain. This thing's going to get a supercharger. And them funny covers that came with it. And then the injection top. And that'll put the fuel injector sitting right up about here where the stock air box is. And once that's 
in there and on. I'm going to run it about twice until it blows and hopefully come home with another bike in the process. Anyway, I'll let y'all later. Uh, well, this is what this the general shape, not the colors. This thing's going to be solid black. Everything's going to be blacked out, but this is what the little Gixxer 600 will end up taking for a shape uh, other than we're still going to get the lowers on there to put on a lower like I've got on this one I've just got the blue fairing off of the other Gixxer on here while the yellow one's out the yellow one matches the tail section but like I say it's all going to get sanded and it's going to get painted black anyway and uh, yeah, things are getting a little bit different in here. Yeah, oops. Wall of shame. But, the place is cleaned up. I've got all my tools kind of organized. It's amazing how many tools it takes to work on these fucking things. Or I'm using them. I still don't have enough tools. Got the stereo rigged up. That's a little 15 inch sub in a box there. Audio pipe or some shit. And that one's a Nady uh, PW12. Little PA stage monitor thing. This fucking roundhouse. And that's my homemade bench polisher. That sucker works like a charm. But. Alright, that's just the general shape that this one's going to take. I'm just kind of making notes for myself. I'll let you out later.